So we obtained, obtained records from the Justice Department about an interesting issue. There were two assistant U.S. attorneys who attended a Clinton campaign event in what year? 2016, obviously, the Clinton campaign event. So Judicial Watch found these records as a result of suing for them. And these two U.S. attorneys were involved in the prosecution of now former Congressman Dunker Hunt, Duncan Hunter. Hunter uh, uh, and his wife were charged with 60 separate criminal charges relating to the misuse of campaign funds. You know what? When a federal prosecutor charges you with 60 criminal counts, that's an indication that there's something up. Not in terms of your being the, what the defendant did, but what, why is the prosecutor doing this? Hunter pled guilty to one count of criminal conspiracy, and he resigned from Congress earlier this month, uh, uh, January 7th. And he's scheduled to be sentenced on March 17th. So here's the story. In June of 2019, Hunter filed a motion to dismiss the charges against him, or in the alternative, recuse the U.S. Attorney's Office in San Diego on the grounds that the two prosecutors Elena Robinson and Emily Allen's attendance at an August 2015 fundraiser presented a political conflict of interest, and so they shouldn't be on the case. And this is what's interesting. They, in response, the prosecutors represented the San Diego federal court, represented to the court that they were asked to attend the Clinton fundraiser, quote, in the event of a protective security related incident where immediate prosecutorial guidance would be necessary. Does that sound true to you? Well, I'll tell you why it's not in a minute. The statement did not elaborate on what kind of incident might require prosecutorial guidance. An earlier letter from the Executive Office of the United States Attorney General, the U.S. United States Attorney's General Counsel, represented that the prosecutors were at the event, quote, in their official capacity assisting law enforcement. And the new records, to put it charitably, raised serious questions that we, the new records that we got raised serious questions about whether these prosecutors were lying to the court. Listen to this. In an email sent on the date of the Clinton fundraiser, August 7th, 2015, with the subject line photo, a U.S. Attorney's Office official whose name is redacted sends a note to another U.S. Attorney's Office official whose name is also redacted. Thank you so much for the invitation to this morning's event. I was blown away by your incredible hospitality and can't thank you enough for allowing us to crash that fabulous party. It was really a memorable morning. In another email on the same date with the same subject line, Again, two redacted officials communicate. You totally downplayed that amazing invitation. I had no idea it'd be so spectacular. I didn't even realize we'd be invited in. I'm so grateful for the invitation. Thank you. So these prosecutors are registered Democrats. They took photos with Clinton at the fundraiser, held at the home of Qualcomm co-founder, big Democratic donor, Erwin uh, Jacobs and his wife, Joan. Shortly after the fundraiser, Hunter then endorsed Clinton's opponent, Donald Trump, which I guess isn't surprising. Robinson became acting U.S. attorney in January 2017, and hence began the prosecution of Duncan Hunter. So as you might imagine, these documents raise questions about Duncan Hunter's prosecution, especially since as they evidence lies to the court. It sure looks like those who participated in the campaign fundraiser were not there to provide prosecutorial guidance, which is obviously a lie. I mean, now we've got proof. The Hatch Act generally prohibits federal employees from participating in political activities while on duty and Department of Justice regulations impose further restrictions on prosecutors. Rules of professional conduct prohibit attorneys from knowingly making false statements of material fact to a tribunal or failing to correct such statements. They also require truthfulness in the statements 
to others. I mean, these obviously, these emails are obviously evidence of political bias at the Justice Department, not only against Duncan Hunter, who is a Republican, who is a conservative Republican, but obviously supportive of Hillary Clinton. So there are all ways to investigate this. The court can investigate this. I don't know if Duncan Hunter's going to raise this. The Office of Special Counsel, there's an Office of Professional Responsibility. But we would not know about this evident corruption without Judicial Watch's work. And it shows you just how out of control the Justice Department is. I've taken the position you can't trust much of anything the Justice Department does in terms of prosecutions of any political figure. That includes political figures I may not disagree with. That includes political figures who may evidently have committed criminal acts. Now, I know prosecutions can be you know, that, that there are sometimes uh, you weigh various factors in deciding whether to prosecute anyone. But do you think most of these prosecutions are done on the merits or, by done, or, or are done by disinterested parties? Trump shows that's not the case. Clinton shows that's not the case. Manafort shows that's not the case. Flynn shows it's not the case. And now we have documents showing that a U.S. congressman may no longer be U.S. congressman. He's gone now. Because you had these Clinton people, Clinton supporters, prosecuting them, and then potentially looks like lying about it to the courts. I don't know if Duncan Hunter's guilty of anything. I do know I don't trust the prosecution now after reviewing these documents, and I hope the court takes a look at it. I mean, you think it's just Donald Trump was being targeted? Or we can't trust uh, anything tied to what the Justice Department did with Trump? Mm -mm. It's a broader issue. And I hope the Attorney General of the United States gets wind of this. That's why I love Judicial Watch. Because uh, we would not know about it but for our litigation here. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.